we'll begin our reading of the story the greatest story ever told by Fulton Osler this is a novel about the life of Jesus Christ written in novel form in this story you will see the men and women of the time of Jesus come alive in this artistic adaptation of the life of Jesus. We'll begin with chapter 1, The Man Who Waited. People in Nazareth said that Joseph was like his great ancestor, the favorite son of Jacob. It was true that the carpenter of Nazareth, with a small golden beard, so different from his black-haired neighbors, was a dreamy, quiet, spoken man, looking more like a scholar than a craftsman. His uncle who brought him up had taught the orphan boy his trade. With those great hands of his, Joseph could build a house or a fence, fashion a chair or a bench, hang a door, mend a wheel, build a new plow or yoke. On the high street, in Nazareth, his little shop with its earthen floor had a clean, constant smell of shavings and sawdust. In the back was a cot, and nearby a grate on which Joseph, the bachelor, cooked simple meals. On long evenings, he would sit on his heels at the open door and sew a rent in his smock or stand outside and breathe deep of the cool air. Later, by the evening flame of a rush burning in an oil lamp, he would read for hours from borrowed scrolls. The golden-bearded Joseph, with the prematurely bald head, was called a visionary because he refrained from gambling with travelers of passing caravans. He avoided tavern women and found his pleasure in good talk with a few neighbors. Among Nazarenes, these were core habits, for generally they were a rowdy lot. This town, lying hidden in the mountains, was near a post on a busy trade route between Europe and Asia, so there was often excitement in the neighborhood, a tide flowing back and forth of camels and baled merchandise pungent fragrances and spicery and rainbow silks of the east, skilled manufactures of the west, wines and oils, etc. The townsfolk got their news from the travelers that would come from Alexandria and Damascus and Jerusalem. The merchants were rough men. The merchants and the people of the town were rough too, ready to take offense, ready to brawl, to gamble and hackle, ready for anything. Late one afternoon, Samuel of Cana stood in dark silhouette on the threshold of Joseph's shop at the end of the street of a coppersmith. The young merchant was tall and powerful against the fading light. The Lord be unto you, he said politely. Joseph put down his hammer, separated his bare feet, which he had been using as a vice for a board, brushed the sweat from his forehead with the back of his hand, and grinned at his friend. Even though the two of them are so different from each other, they are good friends. Peace be unto you, Samuel. Come in. Your chest of good Galilean oak and sycamore is finished and I am about to eat. You'll join me? No, I have just eaten at home, said Samuel, but thank you. The giant Samuel sprawled on the shavings litter of the floor, while Joseph, forsaking his chisel, saw, and other carpenter tools, squatted on his bare heels and spread out a table of bread and curd and a cup of milk. Who fixed you such a dainty meal? asked Samuel suspiciously. 